Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. This is Ross Foreman. And before we get going with our two special guests, let's bring in a third special guest, Josh Matthews. Hold on, Josh. Let me turn on your phone. And I know you got a lot of updates for us. So uh, there we go. Josh, how you doing today? I'm good, Ross. How are you? I'm doing great. Always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, see you. We had a, a good time down in Orlando. Uh, let me ask you, what do you think uh, as you uh, look back at the redemption TV tapings afterwards? Uh, what do you think? Well, I haven't stopped looking back yet. I am literally um, going through, as I talk to you um, and everyone else on the phone, good morning or good afternoon, um, I'm going through thousands of photos that were taken um, in Orlando last week. We've got some really good shots, some amazing different uh, perspectives. I sent the photographer up to the catwalk high above uh, the ring, so I'm looking at those pictures right now. I've got some great shots of Ty Valkyrie. Um, I, I think the uh, overall, I mean, it, it was great. I think Redemption was, it was a great show. Um, it was what it needed to be, and then I think the TVs that followed, you know, you have a group of individuals who come together and work uh, incredibly hard for a straight week in, uh, of wrestling, and that's not easy to do. Um, you know, I've watched these talents do this now for the past four or five years, um, and everyone sort of, you know, circles the wagons and, and comes to play, so to speak, and, and it's just a, it's a proud feeling flying home uh, last Friday, or whenever that was that we left, um, you know, to where we are right now, and, and we just keep going. You, you can't stop. You know, it just keeps going. Well, you have a, uh, a lot of news updates for us, so I'll let you uh, get going with some of that before we open it up. Just for a couple questions for Josh before we bring in Kira Hogan and Rohit Raju. Josh, what's yeah, on your plate? Love, love the idea of a Rising Stars teleconference today. That's that's really cool. that You guys are going to get a chance to hear from Rohit and Kira, uh, two people that you don't get a whole, uh, to hear from a whole lot. Um, before I get into any questions... Josh, wait, hey, let me interrupt you, Josh. Wasn't that, okay. that your idea for this teleconference? I, you know, Ross, I have so many good ideas that I don't know if that one was mine or, or not, uh, quite frankly. And, and you know what? I have so many good ideas that I just I, I let people take them. I, I let people take them and, and, and run with them. So, so maybe you can take credit for that one. I don't know. I will. Okay. Uh, before I get into questions, let's just go through quickly what's going to happen Thursday. Uh, Six-man tag team match, Drago, Phantasma, Aerostar versus DJZ, Andrew Everett, and Desmond Xavier. Uh, sort of a rematch from what we saw at WrestleCon. My tongue is firmly in my cheek when I say sort of a rematch um, because you have Phantasma competing in this match. I think you're going to get uh, a, a similar match that we got at WrestleCon in New Orleans, high-flying, uh, action-packed, and, and just six guys working incredibly hard uh, in a match that should be a lot of fun. OVE will be in action. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with Dave and Jay Chris. Matt Seidel defends the X Division Championship against Taji Ishimori. Uh, Taya Valkyrie will meet Kira Hogan. That's a redemption rematch. And then we also have, of course, Rosemary versus Sue Young. It had to come to this between these two knockouts. They go one-on-one. -on -one. And then a story that just broke a little while ago on ImpactWrestling.com, maybe about 45 minutes ago, uh, Brian Cage, the world tour of Brian Cage will begin. So Cage is going to travel from uh, Australia, Tokyo, Canada. He's going to go all over, and he's going to be competing and basically just destroying people, uh, leaving bodies in his wake. So we'll see uh, Brian Cage compete, and you guys uh, will catch uh, those matches on Impact. Then this Saturday, um, Sanjay Dutt and I are going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in Des Moines, Iowa. We will be with uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver. Uh, they have a great show lined up. Pentagon will be in action, and uh, Eli Drake will be there. Uh, I'm going off the top of my head here. Who else will we see there? Um, uh, Tommy Dreamer will be in action as well. Uh, so just a great show on Saturday, Cinco de Mayo in Iowa. And if you're not in Iowa uh, for Cinco de Mayo, you can catch the show live on Twitch. It all gets started at 9 p.m. Eastern. I don't know when it will end, uh, but it gets started at 9, and we're going to be live on Twitch throughout the day. So we'll do... Uh, Kind of a Twitch cast for three hours from 12 p.m. Eastern to 3 p.m. Sanjay and I and various guests, very similar to what you guys saw in New Orleans, very real IRL style. Um, we'll turn the camera on and, and we'll keep it going for three hours. Then we'll do a pre-show uh, from 8 to 9. Then the show, of course, uh, twitch.tv slash impact wrestling. You guys can watch, interact. I, I will be in the chatter with you guys talking and interacting as much as we can. And then we'll do a, a post-show afterwards uh, scheduled for 30 minutes 
But, I mean, who knows? We'll probably throw the pack on, uh, head to the bar afterwards, and, and just leave it on as we uh, hang out and, and drink margaritas and talk wrestling. Uh, I know you guys love all that stuff, uh, so we'll keep that going for as long as, as, as we possibly can on Saturday. Um, and then next weekend, we're going to be in Pittsburgh, uh, May 11th and 12th with Rise for a seminar on the 11th. Uh, you can still get information on the seminar. You can still sign up for the seminar. Uh, just go to antiwrestling.com slash event. Get information on the seminar on the 11th. Uh, we'll also do the Twitch stuff there. I have to figure out what we're going to do there, but there'll be a lot of... Uh, to me, this is like the NFL Combine, right? We can do a lot of, of cool different types of things as I'm thinking out loud, talking to everyone. Um, and then Saturday will be a Rise show, Ascent, I believe it's called. And uh, while we can't Twitch those matches, we'll kind of give you guys a behind the scenes feel of what's happening. So that's sort of like the next two weeks of what's going on, uh, impact and, uh, Thursday, excuse me, uh, the Twitch stuff this and next weekend. Um, so, so yeah, uh, lots of things happening. Um, Slammiversary is right around the corner on July 22nd. Uh, tickets will go on sale for that sooner rather than later. Uh, and with that said, I think I've covered all my bases, Ross. So if anyone has any questions, uh, for me, uh, I'll take them now. Just, uh, one other quick thing that, that you have the, VIP packages for June 1 and 2 in Windsor are now available at shopimpact.com. And a quick uh, update for everybody, the recent April uh, VIP, we had a we have a new mini golf champion. Uh, Desmond Xavier with a hole-in-one on the playoff came out as the new champion. We went to some bowling the next day, and uh, Conan predicted it. He said he would go in as a champion and go out as a champion, and sure enough, Conan is the uh, the bowling champion. I didn't know Desmond hit a hole in one. He's a, he's a pressure player, huh? He sure is. Came through. Good for him. Good for him. All right. Well, we we can open up just for about five minutes of questions with Josh, and just questions at this point for Josh Matthews. Q and A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi, Josh. It's James at Wrestling Epicenter. How are you doing today? No, well, hold on, James. I got to, Josh. I got to open your phone up. Sorry, my mistake. Josh, you're good to go there. Sorry about that. Hey, James. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. So you know I'm a big connoisseur of wrestling commentary, and you've had two different partners. One you've had before, and then Don Callis for the pay per view and the tapings. And I thought Don Callis and you had a real almost edgier attitude era feel to your commentary thoughts on on my take of your commentary on uh, this past impact I, I thought it was interesting because you know and i've thought about this a lot throughout my career and i know that um uh i, I gotta be brief with you guys um i mean i've had the opportunity to work with with everyone right I, i've worked with jim ross i've worked with michael cole taz uh, Jeremy Borash, when he was at Impact, uh, everyone, Jer uh, Jonathan Coachman, I, every, every person that's ever called uh, a substantial amount of wrestling, I've called shows with them. Um, I, when Sanjay came in, I thought that Sanjay hit a home run, and, and we had great chemistry, and, and I thought the same thing with Don. Uh, to your point, I do feel it was, it was a little different. To me, it had a, a more old-school uh, wrestling vibe to it. Um, it, it you know, I, I'm, my comfort zone is to be the straight guy that calls wrestling and asks questions. <laughs> uh, I try to bring out, you, you know, Don and I didn't have a whole lot of time to, to, to work together to prep, and you can't really prep, right, for this. You have to just get in to the game and call it and see how it's going to go. So, um, you, you know, I kind of had an idea right away of what, of what kind of style Don was going to bring, and, and I try to, um, you know, just bring out the best in whoever I'm working with. Uh, at the end of the day, if I get my partner over and I get the talent over, then I've done my job. So to answer your question, I thought it was great. Uh, I'm looking forward to calling th this uh, live Twitch show with Sanjay, and then I'm looking forward to getting back and calling Impact with Don. So I, I, I sort of get the best of both worlds. I've got an opportunity to call uh, shows with Scott Demore, and I love working with Scott. We have fun and, and the way we interact. So it's different with each person, um, and, and I just, I'm lucky enough to be the guy sitting in that chair getting to work with everybody. If you'd like to ask, your request has been received. Josh Ryan Bowman from thegrillposition.com. <clears throat> hey, uh, you guys have had an upswing in ratings. Uh, there's so much new interest on the various platforms, and the atmosphere of the recent tapings has been outstanding. 
is that vibe starting to carry through to the locker room? And do you guys feel like you, you, after all the changes now really settled into a rhythm? Yeah, without question. I mean, when we looked at the, the ratings on Thursday following redemption, it was, okay, what's it going to be and how much is the NFL drafts going to affect us, right? I mean, that's what we were all thinking. And, and between myself and Scott Demore and Sanjay and Kevin Sullivan, we all sort of chat throughout the day as to, okay, what do you think the number's going to be? What do you think it's going to be? Um, so, so we all go on with, with, with reasonable expectations for what it's going to be each and every Thursday. And, and then the really telling number is when you get the pluses, right? When you find out what, what it did over the weekend. You know, even when you look at Spike UK right now, the, the, the consolidated number, the, the, the end all number, it stays around the same place that it did before we moved time slots. So I think that everyone is starting to feel this, and it, it does feel great. And I think that being, you know, in, we have one more TV taping before Slammiversary. I think in the past you wouldn't have gotten that. We would have gotten everything done in Orlando and see you um, on July 22nd. But we're, gonna, we're all going to be together, as Ross mentioned, on June 1st and 2nd in Windsor. Um, and VIP packages are still available at shopimpact.com. Um, but, but yes, I think that right now I, I left here and I tweeted, I don't tweet bullshit to you guys. And I think you guys know that, right? Um, I tweeted that this was the best TV that I experienced in a long time. And without question, I'll stand by that tweet because it was, because you didn't have, there, there was no drama. There was no, there was no drama. And you guys can figure that out however you want to figure it out. But it was drama free for, for those many days and it was fun and, and things got done and things got accomplished. So, so at the end of the day, you, you fly home with a smile on your face. You may now ask your question. Hey, Josh, Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. First and foremost, uh, congratulations on Redemption. It was a really solid pay-per-view. Uh, thank you for your time today, sir. Yeah, of course. Thank you. All right, so my question is to kind of piggyback off the first question. I, I noticed something between you and Don uh, as I was, you know, watching the, the Impact pay-per-view and, and the last few tapings. Uh, during the commentary, y you and Don Callis are using a lot of, uh, let's just say, insider wrestling terms uh, like over and stiff, so on and so forth. I was just wondering, is there like some type of new evolution to uh, the wrestling commentary or is, is this something that you feel that kind of draws in the, let's just say, smarky crowd or the internet uh, fans, so on and so forth? Well, it's such a fine line between, you know, placating to your audience that you know follows wrestling and follows what you guys do uh, on the internet and, and reads everything. And that's cool, right? I, I love those fans. But then you have new fans each and every week. And so you have to, like, you know, draw that fine line and, and people always say like, well, you know, you, you always say this about so-and-so. Well, I, I'm not saying it to the people that know it. I'm saying this to the new audience. Um, I, I tried for a long time to get into uh, the X Games, but the, the commentators used so much inside jargon that it turned me off. I couldn't watch anymore because I was so tired of hearing these, these, these sayings for all these moves that I was like, you know what, enough. So at the end of the day, if I can talk to a new audience and explain what something is, and then either Don or Sanjay, myself, whoever uses the, the, the term that, you know, blue thunder bomb that you want to hear, like, that's great. But, you, you know, one, you're never going to please everyone. And, and two, you have to realize that, and, 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 you know, you're speaking to a larger audience. If you just try to contain that to the, the, the wrestling fans that read the Internet, then, in my opinion, you're not going to grow. So you have to explain what's happening to a broad, general, first-time viewer turning in for the first time. I've heard about Impact Wrestling. I want to know what it's about, and I don't want to turn you off. I want to keep you engaged. I want to keep you involved. Josh, you got time for one more question? Uh, sure, one or two, Ross. Yeah, you tell me, whatever you want. Oh, hi, Josh. This is Ian Carey from SEScoops.com. Just a quick question. You recently um, uh, resigned from your role as Matt Seidel's spiritual advisor. And I'm wondering if you have an update on how he's doing without your sage wisdom and guidance. I mean, he's doing great. Look at everything Matt's accomplished. He's uh, still X Division champion. He's going to face Taji Ishimori Thursday. And, I mean, at the end of the day, that would have been a fun avenue to go down. Um, but luckily and thankfully, the decision was made to call an audible. Um, but it didn't just end. We, you know, we gave you an ending. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that Matt Seidel is going to flourish 
in his career. And um, I, I think that um, for now, uh, the Josh Matthews character can, can go away for a while and I could, I could be myself as, as the play-by-play -play announcer for this show. Because again, at the end of the day, that the person that does that um, straight shooter and I can go and host 18 different Twitch shows um, mm -hmm. and, and be a trusted voice for you guys to, to, to see and, and hear every week. Great. Alrighty, Josh, I appreciate your time very much. And as requested, I got you off the phone in time, so you're free at 2 o'clock Central Time. Well, yeah, I got to play HQ Trivia, and uh, I have to get on an airplane to go to Nashville uh, to meet up with Sanjay to, to do some voiceover work. So, so we'll pro you guys will probably see Sanjay and I uh, tomorrow at some point on Facebook Live, so, so be on the lookout for that. All right, Josh, safe travels. We will uh, speak to you next week. All right, thanks, Russ. Bye. All right, at this point, uh, let me welcome in. Let me open up their phones for a second here. All right, there we go. Got to love modern technology. I'd like to welcome our two special guests for this week. Uh, I'm actually super excited to talk to them uh, and tell them uh, by the number of media I see in on this call. I think the media is excited for these two as well. We haven't had a lot of uh, media with them yet, so kind of a, a first time hearing from Knockouts Kira Hogan and Rohit Raju. Kira, welcome. Rohit, welcome. Hey, what's up? Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's start Thanks with for that destroying my name, Ross. I appreciate it. Did I destroy it? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Like every time someone tries to pronounce it, it's something different every single time. Well, then I'll let you right now give us the proper pr pronunciation. It is. It's Rohit uh, Raju. I think I'm going to start going by ravishing Rohit Raju pretty soon. Maybe I'll three R's. We'll see what happens. Well, I think pretty much I had that spot on. Did I not have it? Yeah, you did. You were spot on. That's what I'm saying. Thanks for not butchering it. All right. Well, you're welcome on that. So let me let me start with you, uh, Rohit. What's what's going on with your world? Where, where are you at these days? What's uh, what's keeping you busy? Hustling, man. Uh, I got the impact behind my name now. Indie bookings have opened up a little bit. Uh, pretty much just trying to cement my spot, I guess you could say, an impact. I'm low man on the totem pole. I'm not a huge name in the indie circuit. So coming in, it's just like, okay, who's this guy? What can he do? Uh, why is he here? So that's fun. That's fun for me. I get a chance to prove everybody, my, uh, show everybody my worth, uh, prove all the naysayers wrong, and do what I got to do, and uh, slowly but surely climb up that impact ladder and cement myself as an impact superstar. So, you know, that, that's what I'm doing. Rohit, you had a bunch of matches down in Orlando last week. Your thoughts about uh, what happened down uh, in Orlando last week? Uh, my matches, I, I had some really good matches. I would say right now I'm hovering. You probably won't see anything huge for me until the rest of the Desi Hit Squad comes. Uh, I think once you see Gama get there, everything will change. He brings a lot of notoriety. He brings a lot of respect. So things will start to elevate for me. Uh, it was a little bit different. It was a little bit slower, I guess you could say, from the previous tapings. But I'm just happy to be there, and I'm happy to uh, show my hustle and keep doing what I got to do. Now, Kira, you've had you've had several high-profile matches, uh, Ty Valkyrie and others. What uh, what's going on in your world these days? Uh, you know, trying to set the world on fire as usual. I'm just trying to keep working, get my name out there, and just be the best I can possibly be. I think um, as far as women's wrestling, I've been able to do Shimmer, Shine. I'm still the WSU Spirit Champion. So I've been I've been working pretty hard these past few months now that I finally had my debut at Impact. Well, we have to ask you about the hair. <laughs> I'm not sure what well, that says coming from me, but, you know, uh, t talk to us about the hair a little bit. Well, when I first started wrestling, I didn't really have a character. And actually, my boyfriend was the one who gave me the character, the girl on fire. He told me I need to find my fire, and it just kind of stuck with me. Uh, I always wanted red hair. Like, as long as I could remember, I, all I wanted was red hair. Um, and then eventually when I got into the Girl on Fire, I did it red and orange. And then I finally just evolved it all the way to the red, orange, and yellow. And I've had so many stylists. I think I've had four stylists do this color on me. So it's, it's, a, it's not without a working team effort to get my hair this looking like this, but I love it. Like, I just think it just really shows the Girl on Fire. Like, I really think it just puts a lot more personality into into my match into my character 
I just think, you know, it's on fire. So basically, though, your boyfriend is taking credit for Girl on Fire. Pretty much. <laughs> I have to cut him a check, too. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, guys, we're going to open up for some media questions at this point. So, media, uh, please, if you have questions, star six to get in queue. We ask, uh, as always, please identify yourself and your media outlet. And please, only one question. So, we have uh, a lot of people in line. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. One question and one question only. Hi, Rohit. Hi, Kira. My name is Stephanie. I'm working for Steel Chair Magazine in UK, and I'm absolutely delighted to talk to you both. Um, my my question is um, because you uh, my my question is for Kira. Um, I had the chance to talk with Sienna with um, Rosemary not so long ago. And both of them quoted you as the future of the company, as someone to look, look, look for, look up to. Well, um, what I mean, how do you feel in, in this knockout roster? And of course, how do you? What do you think of this compliment? Thank you. Uh, first of all, wow! I can't believe they said that. That's amazing and I'm so happy to hear that um, I love being a part of the knockouts roster honestly like I, I know I've said this a couple of times in past interviews I still have like old knockouts posters on my wall to this day like I just haven't taken them down because it was just such motivation for me um, when I first started I just I really wanted to be able to get my name out there and just be able to be the best and get to the biggest companies and I feel like Impact was one of those companies that I just knew I had to get to and to actually be a part of the company now it's still like a dream a dream come true to me honestly like I still haven't grasped the concept of me being an actual knockout yet because I dreamed about it for so long I could only I only imagined it for so long and to finally be a part of it and to hear things like that from my peers it's it's, it's kind of crazy I'm, I'm actually kind of shocked um, I'm just very happy to have the environment that I have and all the women in the locker room are amazing. One other thing for you, media, please, if you're going to ask a question, please specify if it's for uh, Rohit or Kira and, and or if you would like both of them to answer it. You may now ask your question. Hello, this is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. First, uh, Rohit and Miss Hogan, uh, it is a pleasure to be on with you guys. Rohit, we had a chance to chat uh, a little while ago, and uh, it's really good to talk to you again, sir. My man, what's up, dude? What's up, buddy? And, and all right, so this question is for both of you guys. Um, we, we all know that you guys do great work in ring, and I'm not just saying it. I follow the product very closely. You guys are great. Now, we do know that you know good in-ring work will get you noticed, but character will probably get you over. So my question to both of you is, uh, where do you see your character development moving forward uh, in the future? And is there anything special we have to look forward to? And uh, congratulations on uh, getting on impact, guys. Go ahead, Kira, you can, uh, ladies first. I'll go first, okay. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> um, um, thank you, I'm, I'm, like I said, I love being a part of the knockouts and being part of Impact Wrestling. Um, Right now, I'm actually kind of, um, I feel like I'm at a, a plateau with the girl on fire. I've actually had this conversation with Gail as well. Um, I feel like my character has gotten so far so fast that it's time for an evolution of the girl on fire. I'm not actually sure what that is yet, but I feel like I need to just tweak it a little bit. Um, my in-ring stuff, I'm still learning. I'm still, like, trying to uh, listen and listen, learn as much as I can when I go anywhere as in an impact on the indies, wherever that may be. Uh, I just try to keep my ears and my eyes open just to kind of soak in as much knowledge as I can. Um, but I think right now I just need to tweak the girl on fire to actually get it to like that, that, that hot 
I, I should say, because at this point, I feel like I'm just like plateaued. I'm a super baby face. I'm super fiery. I'm super happy to be here all the time. But I just feel like I just need that little tweak to show actually what the girl on fire actually is. So I think I just need like an evolution um, right now as far as my character goes. Uh, for me, I would say the first thing you notice about me is I'm intense. Uh, right, right, right off the bat, right when I walk down that ramp, it's intensity, huge eyes, screaming, yelling, beating on my chest. And why I am, while I'm super happy to be a part of the Desi Hit Squad, one of my main things is that I want to stand out. So if all I gotta say is, if you ever watch the One Night Onlys or the Twitch, the Twitch uh, pay per views. And you watch my promos, just wait till I get a microphone on impact. That is one of the things I will talk to Eli Drake. Uh, I pick Austin Aries brain, um, guys like that, Matt Seidel. And I pick the guys that have, you know, that were in my spot and that are now, you know, higher up, higher up, uh, up echelon as far as the company goes, because yeah, it's great. It's great being able to do stuff in the ring and, and, uh, outshine and, and look sweet, but man, the best guys are always the guys that transcend professional wrestling with both in-ring work and, like you said, outside. So I'm going to be the guy cutting those promos. I'm going to be the guy with, uh, I don't want to say sweet catchphrases or anything like that, but you will realize, like, man, this guy's got it. He can talk. He can walk. He can do everything. And that's what I want to do. And being, I'm glad that the, the, the gears have changed now that I'm uh, uh, a little bit, being able to be a little bit dirty because, it's just I get to go out there and be comfortable, and I get to go out there and I don't have to worry about making people like me. I just go out to be go out there and be grimy and dirty, and that's the type of style I like. While guys are doing, you know, all the lucha stuff, I want to be the guy snatching them out of the air, putting them in arm bars. I want to be the direct opposite of what people like. That's what I want to be. I want to be different, and so it's cool because when I get put on the impact tapings, I get to work on it uh, and perfect it, and then take everybody else's brain. And, and get their input on it too. So sky's the limit right now. Ravit, that's a perfect follow-up uh, from a, a question I got from Lee Med of Live Radio. He asked, "You're very intense inside the ring. How do you get yourself in the zone? And then how do you calm yourself down after a match?" If you know me and Ross, you you see me backstage. I am very quiet. I am. Uh, I just try to be professional. I, I don't say I keep to myself because I like to talk to everybody and have fun, but I literally walk around the tapings thinking about stuff and I'm in my own head. As soon as it's go time, it is go time. It's like when Austin would always talk about the glass breaking and bam, he's Austin. Uh, that's how it is. As soon as I walk up those steps and I walk up that ramp and I see the ring, bam, it is go time. And then as soon as I'm done and I walk through, you know, I walk down the steps, I take a huge breath. And then I try to, you know, slowly but surely turn down that volume a little bit. I'm just waiting to explode at any second. It's like that. I go to the gym. Bam, I'm ready to explode. And, and that's, it's the chance to let everything out and let all your aggression, let all just everything that's bothering you. And you get to go and you get to shine and you are the center of attention. It's, there's no feeling like it. So, yeah, I just know how to know when to turn it on and know when to turn it off. And any moment, I just, I just love to do it. And uh, it. I can't explain it. It's just a, it's an awesome feeling. Hi there, both. It's uh, Adam at uh, the Impact Lounge here in the UK. Hope you're both well this evening. Uh, I've got a question for both of you. Obviously, you guys are going to be the uh, the future of Impact down the road. But coming through the ranks, what is the w one single piece of advice that you've been given that has been the most useful in your career so far? Go ahead, Kira. Uh, I'm actually trying to think about it. I just, I've, I've gotten so much advice um, that it's hard to pinpoint specific advice because I feel like I've been able to meet so many of my idols growing up. Like, it's ridiculous how many people I've been able to meet that I just watched on TV, and they've given me so much good advice. Um, just stay focused, work hard, make sure you're determined, make sure you own own your stuff, like, I think I just, I've been given so much good advice by so many different people, it's just hard to pinpoint specific advice, but I think all advice is good advice, regardless if it's bad, good, you don't care, whatever, whatever the case is, I just think any advice is good advice, 
and you take it with a grain of salt and you can use it or you lose it. And I, I think that at this point in my career specifically, all advice is good advice because I've only been wrestling for three years. So, um, I would say for me, two of the things from pre like a previous taping and then this taping, when I talked to Jimmy Jacobs, he said, Oh yeah, your match was good, but it was a match. He's like, you didn't have a moment. He said, go out there and have a moment. doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter if you got five minutes in the ring. doesn't matter if you have uh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Give those people a moment. Give them something to remember. It could be a look. It could be a very intricate spot. It could be something, but it has to be a moment. And so you're just not another guy out there being, you know, playing pro wrestler. You're being a pro wrestler, but you're also telling the story. And that leads into what Austin Aries was telling me. Uh, from this taping, he goes, guys, a lot of times he goes, okay, what do you want to do in a match? And he's like, I don't do that. He goes, what story do you want to tell? And I think that separates guys that are on his level and guys that are just randomly doing indie shows and going out there having great matches. But it, when it comes to being on TV, that's what separates you from being just another guy and being a superstar, you have to be able to relate to people where they, they, they hate your guts, they want to see you get beat up, or they love you, and they want to see you be pushed to the moon. You have to have something and be able to tell that story, and you have to be able to relate that story to people so they get behind it. So those are two pieces of advice that I take to heart, and uh, I, I let my brain soak it in a little bit. Rahit, we'll follow that up with a, uh, a quick email question from Colin Vio. Describe what it feels like to get hit with a drill claw. Uh, for me, I didn't get hit with the drill claw. I got hit with the Weapon X. So uh, I couldn't tell you. Unfortunately, I can't answer that question. But being in the ring with Brian Cage is <laughs> it's unreal. That man is ginormous. Uh, so, yeah, it, drill claw, I don't know. Weapon X, there's so much velocity when you just face it getting slammed into the mat. It's, it's, it's intense, man. That guy is a beast. Uh, good morning, everyone. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. My question is for Kira. Kira, uh, Hogan is a heck of a name to have in this, the pro wrestling business. Uh, did you have any reservations about uh, having Hogan as your ring name when you decided to make your debut? Oh, I knew this question was coming. <laughs> I was just wanting to see who was going to ask it first. Um, Actually, my real name is Kiera Hogan. It's on my license. It's on my birth certificate. I'm a real Hogan. Um, when I first started, I was an interviewer, uh, a backstage interviewer and ring announcer, and I just used my real name. So once I finally started training and getting into wrestling, I didn't really want to separate myself from me being the announcer and interviewer because I wanted to show the evolution of Kiera from announcer interviewer to in-ring performer so i just decided to keep it and a lot of people were like why would you keep that name why would you use that name that's so stupid but when i told them it was my real name they were kind of like oh well i mean okay but it you know i i always get the question like even when i was in high school middle school everybody used to ask me are you related to him are you his granddaughter are you his daughter are you i was just like there is no way <laughs> in the world but I mean it's it's just my real name I just decided to keep it to really just show the evolution and the growth of me as a performer and as a competitor Carol will follow that up with an uh, email question in from Stephen who he asked uh, what has been your toughest challenge since joining Impact Oh, it's definitely been finding my fire. And I say that because it's so different wrestling on TV and wrestling on the independents. There's, I feel like there's such a big difference that people don't quite understand. Um, and I feel like on TV, you have to turn up the intensity. You have to turn up your character, turn up your personality. You have to turn everything up to 100 and I really had to learn that. And in this past week of tapings, I really, really learned that. And in this week alone, I feel like I've learned so much from just 
Sunday to Thursday, I learned so much. And I feel like my intensity is finally starting to get there. And I'm taking it now to the Indies. And I feel like people are starting to notice that I've been learning and been, like, intensifying what the actual girl on fire is. Um, so I think, I think now I'm really just focused on intensifying and being what I say I am, which is on fire. Hi, this is Sakshi for the Times of India. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Rohit, this question is for you. Yes. Hello. Uh, Rohit, this question is for you. Uh, how did you break into the wrestling business? Uh, I looked at wrestling school in Atlanta because that's where I'm from. So I Googled wrestling schools. Actually, I wanted to go to Florida to train, but I didn't end up going to the University of Florida, so I stayed home. I Googled wrestling schools, and WWA4 was the first wrestling school to come up. Um, I'm trained by Mr. Hughes. Uh, I was there for two and a half years, roughly, on and off. Um, and then the school is now taken over by AR Fox. Um, so I just Googled wrestling schools. I saw a lot of reviews, a lot of good things. A lot of good people have also come out of that school. Um, and I, Mr. Hughes was actually, he approached me when he saw me come in and I was there every Thursday for the Thursday night show. And then I would come to training and sit around and watch. And he eventually asked me if I wanted to get in the ring. And I told him this was the reason I actually came because I started as an interview and announcer there. And then I worked for a PWX in North Carolina for about a year and then eventually I started training once he asked me like oh you know you can get your shoes and get in the ring and I was like oh my god really oh my god finally like I was so excited so I just googled wrestling schools looked up reviews looked up prices just anything I could do to actually train I was all for it. Rui why don't you answer the same question how you got into uh, wrestling? Um I was always as far as training-wise, I was always into wrestling as a kid, always trying to figure out something. Uh, I finally got a break because I was working a full-time job. I was going to try to grow the House of Truth at the time, but I couldn't make. He was about two hours away from me, so I couldn't make the classes in time. And uh, the money at the moment, I just didn't have. So I found a guy out in Flint, Michigan, and by the name of Xavier Justice. Went out there for a year, taught me my basics, and then I would start going on the indies, and then I would head up to the House of Truth here and there, to learn from Keith Martini, you know, kind of pick his brain, and he would tighten me up a little bit. And then recently, about a year ago, we just started going out to the Can-Am Dojo out in Windsor just to have a, you know, different aspect on stuff. I was going out there. That's Scott Demore's place, Johnny Devine, uh, you know, Johnny Bravo, Phil Atlas, Sean Bowen, a lot of those guys. Those guys are phenomenal. And so if you know the reputation of... Um, the Canem Dojo guys like Bobby Roode, you know, come from there. So that that's a huge like Kushida was there for a while. That's a huge uh, talent roster. So being there uh, was pretty cool for me and learning new things because I was already deep into wrestling at the time. So just going there and just learning new things and uh, seeing different aspects of it was pretty sweet. But man, I've always loved wrestling. I've been a fan since the since a little little kid. So being able to finally step in the ring and do something you love is that's insane. It's awesome. Well, I know both of you two are, are fans of the business, so I'll ask you just to name one person. Who's the one that you idolized growing up? Who's the one wrestler you idolized? Mickey Chang. Rohit? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't name one. <laughs> There's too many. Uh, I guess off the top of my head, I'd say Macho Man. That's a bit of a follow-up question, actually, on, on what Ross just asked. It's Adam uh, from the Impact Lounge again. Uh, Rohit, you, you mentioned about moments, and I, I think that was a fantastic bit of advice. You know, it really is about moments. But you, you said Macho Man there. If, if you could steal anyone else's moment and rewrite history and have it as your own, what, what would you go for? One of the best moments to me, uh, professional wrestling, is just the stare-down with uh, Rock and Hogan in Toronto, 
like that crowd was so electric and they knew they were about to see something fantastic, uh, insane. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a moment. Like you'll never forget that before they even locked horns. That's something that you remember. That's something in professional wrestling. That's, that's to me, that's professional wrestling. It's, it's, it's more than just a sport. It's more than just, you know, entertaining, uh, it, it stuff. It's just, it's beyond words. It's, it's emotion emotion and they're just you're gripped right away and you have these two characters that you've loved and hated and you, they're finally about to do something that's that's something that i would love to experience the crowd is there they just can't wait to see you guys just put on a fantastic match and um they're enthralled and they're already just invested in it and that's that's a huge moment that i would love to experience if you'd like to add, your request has been received We'll follow that up. Uh, I, I actually like this question a lot. Uh, came came to us from Vintage Bricks. Were either of you intimidated stepping into the impact zone for the first time? Go for it, Rahit. What do you think? Um. Yeah, it is. It's I, I, like literally. It's like here's your chance to prove that you already know how that that you deserve to be there. But now you have to convince like all these new people that only maybe like two or three know who you are. And you have to go out there and perform your hustle and show that, yeah, I belong, to, I, I deserve to be here. And it is, it's kind of nerve wracking because it's, it's a huge deal being, you know, in an impact ring, insane. And at the time when I did it, it was a six sided ring and that was my first time being in a six sided ring. So yeah, it is, it is. And it honestly, it, it took me some time to finally start to get really comfortable. I think I was most comfortable this set of tapings than I ever was. Because, yeah, it is. It's kind of nerve-wracking. Kira? Uh, I was definitely, I was definitely intimidated. Like I said, I've been watching Impact for the longest time. Like, I, I've i just seen so much in, in the six I for that ring. So it was definitely intimidating. I was happy, though, my first set of tapings, they changed it back to the fourth side. So I, I was like... Okay, cool. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was definitely intimidated. I was really nervous. Uh, Want to work with everybody because, you know, it was my first time working with a lot of different people. But I think the set of tapings, I was way more comfortable. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to just working in front of cameras and getting right angles and stuff like that. But it's all without, you know, without, uh, with effort to learn and uh, learn all the different ways and, I guess mechanisms and maneuvers to, you know, work cameras. Um, but I think now, like I said, I think I'm getting way more comfortable. I think as time goes on, I will definitely be like way more comfortable in the race. Hi, this is uh, Nick Hausman from WrestleZone.com. And uh, Kira, my question was for you. Uh, you made your big Impact pay-per-view debut at Redemption, uh, but it was a little bit overshadowed when uh, Tessa Blanchard join the commentary team. I was just wondering what you thought about Tessa joining commentary during your match and, uh, you know, if you had any thoughts on that. Uh, I definitely have some thoughts on that. Um, first of all, <laughs> I had my first pay-per-view match, my first live pay-per-view match. Like, I just, that whole day for me was so overwhelming. I almost had a panic attack. I, I literally had to step outside, take a couple deep breaths and really just kind of focus my mind. I was just, I was very overwhelmed with so many different emotions, nerves, excitement. I was just so overwhelmed. And then here comes third generation Tessa Blanchard walking in. Oh, Lord, here we go again. Um, can we all say it together, third generation? You know, <laughs> it was just, it, it, I feel like, you know, Tessa's done so much in her short career span. Um, and she's accomplished so much. She's definitely an overachiever. She's definitely made a name for herself. She's definitely solidified her spot as one of the best female wrestlers in the world. And, you know, it did overshadow what I was doing, which, you know, she's accomplished way more than I have. I can definitely give it to her there. But it was my moment, and I felt like, you know, this was my moment. Why did she have to come in and overshadow me and try to take away from what I was doing. So I have a few choice words from Miss Tessa Blanchard. All right. Thank you very much. You may now ask your question. 
Hey guys, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again, and this is uh, a question for both of you. Uh, Rohit, first, really quickly, uh, uh, you know, you and I have spoken again in the past, and we've spoken very extensively about your love of music and, and let's just say old school hip hop, to, to be more specific. So I just wanted to know, Kira and Rohit, if your lives had a soundtrack, what would they be? <laughs> Jeez, man. I have no idea. If I had a soundtrack, that's a tough call because my favorite soundtrack is from the original Conan the Barbarian. So it would have to be something insane and like like uh, over the top and cool like that. Like, oh uh, man, I do love my old school hip hop, but it would have to be something like with an orchestra. It had to be super sweet like that. So like the first Conan, like first thing when they're making the sword in the beginning of Conan the Barbarian gets me hyped every single time because you know Arnold's about to put in some work, so, but that, 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 I guess it would be that. <laughs> that weird, weird answer maybe, but uh, I would say Conan the Barbarian, the first one, that would be my soundtrack. Hmm. I, I just, I have, I have so much different tastes as far as music. I love hip hop, I love pop, I love country, I love, yeah, I just, I feel like mine would be just a mix of everything. Um, Cardi B would definitely be on there somewhere because I love her. But I think it would just be something very, I love techno rap as well. Uh, I just think it would be something very clubbish, uh, very hype because I'm just, I just love dancing and I love just getting hype with music. So I just think it would be something very like fulfilling as far as getting hyper and getting into the mode and just, it would just be some very hype bowl like mood music, something very hype, like I said, club house music. <laughs> uh, hi, Rohit. Hi, Kira. This is Akshay from International Business Science India. So my question is to Rohit. So, uh, Rohit, how was the, what was the idea behind forming this BAC Hit Squad? And how has it been working with a lot of India-based wrestlers and, of course, Gamma Singh? Oh, I can't, I couldn't really hear you. It was very muffled. I apologize. What, do you say... I heard you say yeah. something about Desi Hitsquad and Gamma Singh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how, what was the, uh, so how was it formed and, you know, how has how the experience been so far working with the, the India-based wrestlers and, of course, Gamma Singh? Oh, okay. Um, when I, met, I first met Gamma, he was so cool. To me, Gamma exudes class. Instantly when you see him, instantly when you talk to him, the way he carries himself, he's such a classy individual. And he has just so much knowledge. Uh, it was cool because it was myself and Phantasma and we were sitting down talking to him and just listening to him, you know, kind of under the learning tree. And it's cool to, um, I know a lot of people keep asking me, what is Desi Hit Squad? What's going on with Desi Hit Squad? Uh, well, I mean, hopefully you got a chance to see myself and Grisender, uh, put in some work recently. I can't wait for the June tapings because that's when myself, Grisender, and Gamma were going to be together. I don't know if everybody else is going to be there, but at least us three. And uh, I just can't wait to do that and get it in motion. I'm very excited for it. And I'm very excited just to be able to actually, you know, it's one thing talking with him backstage and, you know, hearing what he has to say. But then it's going to be another thing being out there performing with him and listening to him, watching him, and then getting all the feedback when we get back and, and, and hear what he has to say. That I can't wait for. And I'm looking forward to that. And I, I'm so happy to be involved in that. One of the coolest things is getting all the Facebook messages from people in India almost every single day and telling me, you know, how proud they are and stuff like that. That's huge. And that means the world to me. And, and being able to represent that is pretty cool. Rahit, we'll follow that up with a uh, question from Michael Ozzy Osbourne. What can we expect from the Desi Hit Squad? Ha. <laughs> things have been quiet for me as of late. And all I can say is when Gama gets there and Gracinda gets there, we plan on shaking things up a little bit. You, you can hear about LAX right now, Cult of Lee, uh, you know, DJ Z and Everett, cool. But once myself and Gracinda get together and Gama's leading the way, yeah, we're gonna shake some we're gonna shake some things up. Hi guys, Ryan Bowman from TheGrillPosition.com and uh, this question is for both of you. <clears throat> you both spoke earlier about 
getting to this level and, and now being featured on Impact TV and pay-per-views. Uh, and I always like to ask this question to people. When you were starting out and maybe struggling and, and trying to get established, when did it click? At what moment did you finally realize, hey, I'm going to be okay and I'm going to make it in this industry? Mm. You want to go, Kara? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. Um, I don't... Mm. I don't know. I just think, like, the more that I was able, like, when I first started, I was very nervous. I was very timid. I was very to myself. I think now I'm way more comfortable walking in the locker room, shaking people's hands, walking up to people, or walking up to certain people because I'm still very, like, taken aback by people that I see that I meet, like I said, that I've watched on TV because inside I'm still my, like, 14-year-old self freaking out. Um, I just... Uh, I feel like as a black woman in this industry, it's very hard, and I feel like I've been able to accomplish so much in the short amount of time that I've been able to work. Um, and I think when it finally clicked. I think it honestly clicked in 2016, like late 2016, when I like started working for like Shine and Shimmer and WS, like the big women's wrestling companies. I felt like I was being solidified as a top performer. Um, and I, I still feel like I, I go in between a lot. Like some days I'll be really, really confident. Some days I'll be taken aback and I'll feel like very frustrated because I'm very, very hard on myself because I know what I can do. And if I don't do it, I'm very hard on myself. Um, but I think like 2016, the end of 2016, when I started to work for bigger all women's companies, it clicked. And then when I got signed with impact, it, it honestly didn't immediately click. It took a while. And like, I think it really clicked for impact when I had my first set of tapings. And then I was like, oh, my God, I'm here. Like, I, I'm, I'm actually here. I'm actually doing it. They, I can't believe they asked me to work for them. Uh, and I have time. And me being a knockout because it's still very overwhelming and it's very, like, dream come true. As, as far as for me, um, ever thinking, like, yeah, I'm finally going to make it, it's never clicked. Uh, for me, never, uh, just because tomorrow's never promised and you, I, I, I'm always hungry. Now, granted, kind of like how Kira said, I know what I can do in the ring. I know my worth. I know my weaknesses, my strengths, what I need to improve on. Um, and I've gone to plenty of, you know, big name wrestling camps, ring of honor camps, you know what I mean? And been told, man, you're good, you're good, you're good. And then I had, I dabbled with them for a little bit. Nothing ever happened. Finally started working in some bigger indie promotion. Um, did some other stuff and was told that if you're good, you're good, you're good. Had that stint with Impact a year ago. And it was myself and Idris Abraham. I was like, sweet, man, this is it. Uh, we did well, and uh, I think I'm going to get signed. And nothing happened. And then there was the Global Forged. And I didn't even, at that time, I honestly didn't think I was going to win anything. I didn't think it. But I, I went there giving it my all doing what I had to do and hoping for the best and just hustling. And next thing you know, they're like, Hey man, we thought you killed it. And we're going to, you got voted and I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, Oh my God, for real. And then even now at impact, it's like, I'm at impact, but I'm low man on the totem pole. So I have to prove it again. I start all over now. Now I have to show these guys what I can do. Now I have to show these guys why I am here and why I believe in myself. But as far as it clicking and saying like, man, I'm gonna make it, I don't know, man. I don't. It never has for me because it's it's never in a weird way. There's a void and it's never enough. I want. I'm not in it. I'm not happy. Like, oh, yeah, cool. I'm signing Impact. Everything's cool now. No. Now it's like I want to be an exhibition champion. I want to be a world champion. I want to be a grand champion. I want to be a top face for this company. So now that that journey has to begin. So it never ends and it never stops for me. And I don't think it'll ever click for me, to be honest, because I'm always going to be hungry for the next step.
uh, they taxi again from the time. So, Rohit, this question is for you. Uh, what's your take on more Indians taking to tour wrestling? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? I couldn't look here. The question is for Rohit. Uh, what is your take on more Indians taking up pro wrestling? You said more women doing what now? No, I, I think the question is for Rohit. Uh, oh. you, you're taking oh. more Indians uh, in pro wrestling, particularly in Impact. I love it. I think it's great. Um, I know it's funny because... When the internet first, when when the Impact first went out the Desi Hit Squad, I watched, I looked, and it got a mixed reaction. For more, uh, I, I should say, it got mixed. Some people were very happy. They were cool. They're like, sweet, this is cool. Um, I'm glad they're branching out, doing something a little bit different. Um, and then some people were like, oh, they're trying to shove this down and throw us, or oh, they're just copying this, or oh, it's just this, 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 this. And it's like, you can't win. Regardless, especially in this day and age, someone's either going to be really happy or someone's just going to complain about it. But why not? You know, why not do it? It's there's so many talented individuals out there of Indian heritage, and I'm one of them. <laughs> and so, so uh, yeah, put me on that pedestal because you can sit here and say, "Well, why this guy?" Well, I'll show you why this guy. And then when Gersinder comes, we're going to see that. And then when Gama, there's so many people that don't don't know who Gama is. You guys are about to be blown away. Look him up. Google him. This guy is like an OG. Sweet. The uh, Karachi, Karachi Vice, you know, all his uh, Stampede stuff. Awesome. I was talking to Don Callis about it. And, yeah, Gama, Gama's legit. I cannot wait for him to get there. I can't wait for Grisinda to get there. And I hope uh, Vikas and uh, Bupinder get a chance to get there, too. If not, you know, we'll hold it down. But I think it's awesome. And people are going to complain either way about it, and that's fine. And we're going to continue to prove people wrong either way, and that's fine. So, But other than that, I think it's awesome that we're starting to see uh, more Indian wrestlers uh, get their time. It's awesome. I'm glad to be a part of it. Hi there, it's Adam from the Impact Lounge again. Um, just a, a comment that Rohit made uh, about obviously wanting to be you know, the face of the company and winning belts. And it's a question for both of you. I mean, at the moment, we've seen you predominantly as a heel, Rohit, and uh, Kira as a, as a face. Do you think you guys can do much on the other flip side of that coin? Can you see yourself as a top baby face, Rohit, and Kira as, as a top heel? Uh, I definitely could see it. I've worked heel a couple of times on the indies, uh, but I've been told I have a super baby face. I'm, I look like I'm 12, so people kind of react more to me being a baby face because I look like a sweetheart, but um, I can be very bratty. I can be very mean and bratty and bitchy, if you will, and I definitely could see it. I've definitely done it before. Um, I work for Shine in the Cutie Pie Club, which we're like the top heel faction there. Um, so I've been able to really kind of play into being like the brat, um, being with the Cutie Pie Club. So I could definitely see it in impact. If I get pushed hard enough, I will definitely push back. <laughs> Uh, same thing, yeah, I definitely can see whatever role you want to give me in, in the challenge, I'm going to uh, succeed at it. Uh, you've seen me as a face recently, and now you get to see my heel work coming up, which I which I love, which I excel at. I just love being, you know, grimy. It's something I love to do and, and uh, shutting people down. But then also I can fight from the bottom and have that intensity and that fire and, and, and that fighting spirit and uh, overcome the odds, and then I can talk on the mic and back it up and do all that stuff. So, yeah. I'm in it to win it, so I definitely can see myself. That's what I'm, I'm shooting for, like you said. Uh, I said in the face of the company, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for the top, and so hell yeah, man. I can definitely see myself being what the company needs me to be, and that is a top star. Yes, hands down. That's what I want. This question is actually for both of you. It came over from Gabriel, and I uh, I just cannot wait to hear your answers, particularly when, uh, from Kira. But the same question for both of you two. Uh, Kira, I certainly want to hear your answer. Did you have a chance in Orlando to meet Scott Steiner? And if so, what did he say to you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did get to meet Scott Steiner. Uh, I saw him in the makeup room, actually. <laughs> that was the first time I got to speak with him. Um, he was talking to Jolene, our gear maker, and I just walked up to Jolene because I had a hole in my fishnet. And he was like, 
he just said, hey, how you doing? I was like, I'm good. He's like, you having you having a good time? I was like, yeah, I'm having a good time. Well, what about you? And he was like, yeah, you know, day's work. <laughs> but like, I didn't really get to like speak to him, but just that tiny moment, I was just like, oh my God, I'm speaking to Scott Steiner right now. <laughs> There's so much from what you just said. I'd just love to follow up on Scott Steiner in the makeup room and fishnet. I'm just going to leave it at that. And then Rohit, you can you can uh, <laughs> chime in on uh, your, your interactions if you had any with uh, with Scotty down in Orlando. Oh, I, I have to seek him out. He's a Michigander. I'm from Saginaw. He's from Bay City. So uh, we were you know 20 minutes half hour away from each other. So and uh, when I was in high school, a guy that used to coach wrestling helped out when he was like long time ago. Uh, when he was a kid, and he would always talk about him. So, yeah, I picked his brain, asked him about Bay City, and if he ever goes back and stuff. And and uh, I know, I can't remember if it was a sister or somebody. They're either selling, they're selling something like cars or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I definitely talked to him and picked his brain. He was cool. You know, he's Scott Steiner. You, don't, you never know if you don't want to annoy him. So I kept it short and simple and sweet, and that was that. And just gave him a nod and said hello to him when I saw him. He looked like he still was like he could rip your arms off and beat you with it. So, yeah, I just <laughs> stayed out of his way and just uh, just wanted to talk to him about that. And I'm like, cool, okay, that's all I need to know. He only looks like that because he can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he can. Oh, hi, this is Ian Carey from SE Scoops. And uh, I have a question for Rohi Raju. And you mentioned a little bit about the parallels between Karachi Vice from Stampede Wrestling and the Desi Hit Squad. I'm just wondering if we can expect similar dastardly tactics from your group and if the Greg Gama has had a chance to sit you guys down to go over some footage from Karachi Vice. Uh, Gersinder, the lucky dog, has got to see more of uh, Gama than I have, but I am headed up to Canada soon uh, and she learned from the great Gamma. And yeah, man, I honestly hope we raise hell and impact. I hope we are vile, villainous, disgusting, ugly individuals. I hope that because I, I want to. I want impact to be like, man, these guys, man, these guys don't, don't, don't play. And uh, I know Gamma has that in him, and I know he can pull that out of us. So, yes, I want to replicate Karachi Vice, and I, I want to do all that stuff, man. I want to get down and dirty and uh, put impact upside down. Hi, uh, this is Shireen from Kutskia, and my question is for the both of you. Uh, so, in fact, having so many tie-ups with uh, companies like Lucha Underground and uh, NOAA, which cross-promotional wrestler would you like to face, uh, both of you? Uh, you say which wrestler will we like to face? Yeah, from uh, an inter-promotional match, if you had a chance to have an inter-promotional match, which wrestler would you want to face? Ooh. You want to go first, Kara? <laughs> I always go first. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> inter-promotional. Man, that is tough. That is tough. There's so many tremendous talents out there. Oof, boy. Um... I don't know, man. That's that's a tough one. Uh it could be anyone from like the former X Division and World Champion AJ Styles. Why not? That guy is phenomenal, legitimately. So I would say I would have to say AJ Styles being able to go in there and uh, go to town with that guy. I think that'd be awesome. I mean, he who who else was uh, he was a great star at Impact, and it would be you know the old versus the new. So I would have to say AJ Styles. Uh, again, like you said, that is a very hard question. Um, obviously, my first choice would be Mickey James. I haven't been able to step in the ring with her. I've been able to talk to, with her a few times, but I haven't been able to actually work with her. Um, but uh, I've also, I would say, Ivelisse. I've tied up with her once, um, and I would love to be able to do it with Lucha and Impact. I think that would be amazing, and we both have red hair now, and I think that would be great. I love working with her the one time I did, and I think that would be a, a great matchup. Hey, 
Stephanie Ifus Pliocha Magazine again. This time my question is for both of you. Um, la last week I, I put a paper online to say um, to people after redemption, watch impact because really the company is on fire, everything is great. And many people are stuck on the, um, uh, on the era of H. Tyson or Joe, uh, Chris Daniels, and are thinking that uh, there are no more homegrown talents in the company. And I tried to explain that uh, you too, among others, where this, uh, this future, uh, the this future, this home, more homegrown talent, uh, that that could lead the company in the future. And here is my question: um, What what do you think you can do to cement the legacy, cement this legacy, uh, the way the same way Styles or Chris Daniels did to 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 create the legend of the company? Thank you. I think uh, to cement the legacy and this kind of. You know, I think Impact's doing that now, and they're 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 doing all the right things. Yeah, a lot of people like to be like, oh, you know, Impact's this, Impact's that, but we've been on a roll, and the talent here is phenomenal. And then just everything that's going on and the direction that we're moving into is great. And I I'm I, I think it's really cool that I am a part of that ride, and I'm just going to continue to do what I have to do to number one stand out. And number two, make a name for myself. And then number three, as I make a name for myself uh, and get better and better, I think that's going to help cement my legacy. And not only that, but help boost impact up. And once I sit here and continue to learn my craft and get better and better and become a person that people want to see, they're going to be wanting to tune into impact along with everybody else that they're going to want to see. And it's just going to not only help the product, but it's going to also help myself out. And I think that'll help cement whatever legacy that I can uh, here in Impact. Uh, I definitely think growth with the company does cement your legacy as as they did and have and how others have in the past. I think growing with the company and starting off, uh, I, I just feel like when you grow with the company. Uh, people get to see your progression and see your evolution. I feel like they can like stick to your story more and actually pay attention because they can see how you improve and how you grow and how you learn. I feel like that's where people really grasp to certain people because they get to see the growth and they get to see what differences you make and they get to see your mistakes and your downfalls, but they also get to see your victories. Um, because I feel like at the end of the day, wrestling is all about emotion. It's about the emotion you put forth when when we wrestle and it's also about the emotion that you give us when you see us wrestle so i feel like that's what people really grasp onto as far as wrestling um and i feel like that's what people are going to grasp onto with people like me and like like us who are starting off kind of small but when you eventually see our progression and our growth and we rise to the top people really hold on to that because they've seen us come so far so i feel like growth with the company is definitely going to help submit our legacy i'm going to follow that up with a question from swack fan 100 he wants to know what do each of you like most about being an impact for me is being on the next level learning being in the ring with top talent it's, uh, I kind of became stagnant where I was on the indies because I was just working with the same guys over and over. And I always kept saying, I need to be in the ring with top tier guys because that is going to help me get better. And so far, that's exactly what Impact has allowed me to do is be in the ring with some of the best. And I get to learn from that and I get to improve. So to me, being in the ring with top people like that, that's, that's the best thing. That's been awesome for me. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I definitely, definitely agree with that 100%. It's being able to work with the people that we get to work with and being able to learn so much and like Tommy Dreamer and Gail Kim and all of these other people. Like, I just feel like we just, we have such good people backstage that help us along the way and are so helpful. They're not, um, distant or hard to come up to. Like, you can literally talk to just about anybody about anything if you have to. I feel like the company itself is so intimate 
Um, but I also like the fan interaction that we're able to do. Um, like our VIP fan interaction is amazing. I feel like a lot of big companies don't get to do that as often because they like to shelter. Um, I feel like with Impact, it's it's all about the fans. I feel like it's all about um, our audience, and they want us to be able to interact with them as much as possible. Uh, like our VIP uh, experience that we had at the last set of tapings, we did mini golf. Well, I did the mini golf, and Desmond Xavier got, was the champion of all champions, unfortunately. He stole my spotlight. But I feel like that experience in itself show fans that we're real people and don't be afraid to come up to us and we'll interact and talk and take pictures and do whatever because at the end of the day like there's a reason we're here we're doing it for them we're doing it for ourselves and we all just come together for this one thing that we love and that's wrestling Alrighty, guys well with that we will wrap it up for this week I appreciate both of you guys very much We'll have a, uh, a final word from each of you. Rohit, why don't you uh, jump in there first with a, a final thought as we wrap it up. Oh, man. Uh, thanks for having <laughs> me on, first of all. I just uh, I can't wait for you guys to uh, see the Desi Hit Squad. Uh, of course, Rohit Raju, the mocha skin animal. His mother called him son because he shined like one. Desi Hit, that's the ha. i got to actually, actually, before we move on to Kira, but... Rohit, are you going to have a you're going to have an entourage over in Windsor, June one and two? All the fans coming over from uh, uh, Detroit area to see you? Uh, yeah, we actually have people have been hitting me up. They're like, "Are you going to be on the tapings? Are you going to be on the tapings? Uh, we want to get tickets." I'm like, "Well, I better be on the tapings." So I told them to get tickets. So I do have a good chunk of people that are actually going to want to come uh, to either a couple of the days. Um, I'm trying to get them to do the whole weekend, but I know at least I can get them to come to Windsor. So, yeah, well, there's a good chunk of people coming over to Windsor. I had to imagine you would have a nice little uh, fan base there. Yeah. Kira, <laughs> final thought. Uh, thank you guys so much. I really enjoyed this experience. I love answering questions like about stuff like this and being able to tell my story and where I've come from and how far I've come. And I'm so glad for everybody supporting me and supporting the girl on fire, the one and only. Uh, don't forget, I will be wrestling Taya this week. My rematch for Redemption is this week, so don't forget to check that out. All righty. Well, Kira, Rohit, thank you very much. We will see you guys in uh, Windsor, June 1 and 2. And, Media, I will talk to you next week.